Our meeting tonight is now open for the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian Science. Jim, Arizona. Jim from Arizona, go ahead, please. Good evening. Saturday morning, I was about to go to breakfast when I realized I did not have my wristwatch on. I proceeded to check where I usually place it, but did not find it. So I proceeded to check every possible location. I realized that this was a bit foolish. God knows where the watch is, and I have not asked him. I left the apartment and had breakfast and returned and went to the bed bedroom. I sat down on the bed. Next to the bed is a swivel chair with a... Um, the skirt hiding the mechanism that keeps it for the swivel. What should I see hiding beneath the skirt but my watch? I immediately uh, picked it up and burst out with, Thank you, Shepherd. I am most grateful for this lesson and reminder that we should always go to God first. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Carol from California. Go ahead, please. Okay. Oh, Monday, past Monday, I tripped and I fell hard on the concrete outside of the bank. I hit again my knees. My knees hit first and then my hands. And I, I was a little shocked and so much, a lot of pain, which was very distracting to me. I know I was yelling and yelling. So people came, but they and they kept trying to help me. They kept like, they wanted to pick me up. And I was like, leave me alone, leave me alone. Don't touch me, leave me alone. And then finally, I remembered God's here. God's here. God's here and I cannot be hurt. That was, it took me a little while. And then from that point on, I said to myself, every Christian science truth that I could think of, which is like, we are perfect in God, God is my strength, God is my life, all the things from the daily treatment, every time the negative came, I said no, and I followed up with a truth. So I did, I did use ice, I was ha you know, having trouble walking, but I did use ice. By the next day though, by Tuesday, yesterday, I didn't need a walking stick. My knees weren't swollen. And now today's Wednesday and I'm just like all good. And the bank person wanted me to come in and wait and call somebody and maybe this happened, maybe that happened to you. And I was like, no, I want to walk. I want to go home. I need to walk. I need to go home. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Um, Thank you, and thank you for being here to listen, and have a great night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Candy from Wisconsin. Candy from Wisconsin. Go ahead, please. Craig, thank you for those very helpful readings tonight. I would like to express my gratitude for God's protection tonight. We are taught in this church when there is bad weather forecast to handle it. Two weeks ago, severe weather had been predicted for part of Wisconsin. During this time, I worked with these statements from the Blue Book or Course in Divinity and General Collectania. No, the elements are in God's hands, his fists. They are not destructive, but governed by harmony and express harmony. The weather manifests God's government, and no evildoers can change this fact. The devils of human thought, all the powers of many minds, are powerless in love's presence. At one time, the tornado siren blared, but nothing transpired. Another time, the rain was pelting the window with such great force that I got up from the bed to make sure it was completely closed. As I looked out at the trees, I noticed they were still. Now this seems strange, as I could hear the wind. So I went to the living room and looked again, kind of like Doubting Thomas. This time it was the same. I could hear the wind, 
but the trees were not moving. The next morning when I arose, I looked at the yard, and only a few extra leaves were on the ground. The same was true of my neighbor's yard in the area where I lived. A big thank you to this church for teaching us how to utilize Mary Baker Eddy's great gift to the world, Christian science. Thank you, and good night. Thank you. Nathan from California. Go ahead, please. Good evening, and thank you, Craig, for that reading. That was great. This is my first testimony, so bear with me. Um, I want to thank my pr practitioner in these testimony meetings and the roundtables and all those that share. Um, you guys have been so helpful to me. And I want to thank this church and all its warriors of God within it. Um, you guys have stood and watched and prayed for us, uh, people like myself, and paved the way with your prayers. So thank you so very much. So this is about my lost wallet prior to traveling um, about a week ago. And so I, I lost the wallet. Um, I tried the material route, um, calling a rental car company where I had left it, and um didn't make any progress. I couldn't find it. So before leaving um, and after praying on my own, I called, I called a practitioner. So these were some of the things that we had talked about um, on that call, which I thought was very helpful. Um, it was that uh, God is all-knowing. God knows where it is. Nothing is lost in God's mind. Past, present, and future are all in sync in God. And I know where it is, and I know what to do. And God did not make a dishonest person. <clears throat> so I I thought about these things and kind of thought about those statements throughout my day, and I felt really good about it. And I felt that that was even more helpful um, than getting the wallet back. And I started thinking about, it made me think about myself, that there is no loss in me or of me. And I'm not lost, and nothing is lost in God's mind. And this was, in, in my estimation, greater than getting the wallet returned. Um, I had a lot of business cards, debit card, a lot of stuff was in there. Um, and then my, you know, my ID card, my driver's license. Um, but I kind of let it go. I put a request in for the lost and found, went on my little mini trip, and um, just took my passport. So a week later, I went down to the car company, and um, they said that they had my wallet. And so I went to this nondescript place, and um, it was kind of way far off, and it was kind of strange. So I went in, and I walked in, and I said, is this Avis? And the lady said, yes. And I said, I think you guys have my wallet. And she says, well, what kind of wallet is it? And I identified the wallet. And she looked down, and she had that wallet <laughs> in her hand at that exact time. You know, nothing was lost in that wallet. Nothing was used. Everything was intact. And it showed me to always trust, like what Jim was saying, always to go to God first, always trust God, that all things are possible with God. And, you know, the beauty of it is when she returned it, there's a piece of paper, and I read, and I forget which book, one of the books, and Massetti said to put this in your wallet. Love is all powerful. Love is all seeing. Love is ever present. Thy kingdom has come. Thy will is done on earth as it is in heaven. And I was hoping that whoever had that wallet and returned it read that. So thank you, everyone, for listening. I'm so grateful to be home in this church and to be a part of this church. Have a good evening. Thank you. Ron from North Carolina. Go ahead, please. Thank you. A week ago, the computer that runs a piece of machinery that is critical to our business crashed. I'm less than literate when it comes to working with this program, as is the young man who usually runs it. We both follow a set of instructions that were put together many years ago, and as long as there are no glitches, all is well. <clears throat> This was no ordinary glitch. So the computer was sent off to the folks who originally programmed it to, oper 
programmed it to operate this machine. When the computer returned, the basics for the machinery was installed, but the specifics for how we used that machine was all there, but looked very different. It was not in the form that I had been used to seeing for years. It was at that point that Mortal Mind started in, telling me how hopeless the situation was, why didn't I know more about this program, instilling fear that deadlines would not be met, generally creating a black cloud over the whole situation. It was at that low point that I sat and made the attempt to compose myself, to get still. Voices from the Plainfield Church roundtable discussions and from testimony meetings came to mind. Voices making simple requests to God for guidance in one's daily walk. Testimonies affirming God's presence and power when confronting limitations imposed by aggressive animal magnetism. Feeling inspired and strengthened by these thoughts, I went back to the computer and began going through the folders. It was then that one of the titles captured my attention. Opening the folder, despite not looking as it had in the past, I engaged one of the options and behold, the machine responded as it was designed to do. It was all there and much like Hagar, my eyes had been opened to it and the credit was clearly not mine. I'm ever so grateful to all who share their spiritual experiences through testimonies, writings, roundtables, for they don't stop blessing just their own lives at a given time, but ripple on. And thank you, Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, for making it all possible and keeping it fresh week after week after week. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen. Stephen from California. Go ahead, please. This is my first testimony, so I'm going to keep it kind of short. About 35 years ago, I lost my car at City College of San Francisco, and I called a plain field practitioner, and he told me that nothing could be lost in mind. And then it finally dawned on me where I had left my car. I called the City College Police Department, and they confirmed that I did leave my car in a certain spot, so nothing was lost. I'm very grateful for being a member of Plainfield and all the help that the practitioners have given me at Plainfield. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy. I am very grateful to be learning Christian science here in Plainfield and for all the blessings I have gained from it. Yesterday, a plan was made where a few of us would meet at church. It felt like the right idea, but then there started to be a lot of opposition presenting itself to me. I was able to overcome that opposition using the tools I have gained here, and it indeed was a blessing. And so my gratitude is for how Christian science and working with a a Plainfield practitioner has helped me to continually be better at listening to my spiritual sense and discerning the difference between the subtle and not so subtle clues where I'm taking a misstep and also seeing the resistance that comes when we are working to express the good that God gives us to do. And I'm just so grateful for this church and for all I'm learning here, which is helping me to be more consistent and being able to do what I feel God is telling me to do. And what a joy it is to be able to end each day knowing I have done what I can do. And that's a feeling I never had before Plainfield, and I owe it all to Christian Science, this church, and practitioner support. Thank you. And now I have a testimony from a new member, Imogene, Imogene in Australia. The keys and paths to our home had been missing for a couple days. Being in lockdown would make a replacement set quite difficult for us to acquire. The week's lesson was a treasure trove, and one scripture stood out, 1 Corinthians 2.16, quote, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, end quote. I worked with this scripture. After searching top to bottom of our home for the umpteenth time, I again checked a certain little nook where we always keep our keys. 
This, in fact, was the very first place we had looked, and had since checked this place many times with no result. The thought came within, Father, you know all, show me where to go. Immediately, I put my hand directly onto some, something oddly shaped that was jam jammed at a very strange angle at the back of this little nook. I drew out a set of keys. Astonishingly, holding these keys in my hand, I heard mortal minds saying, those are not the keys. But I felt within, those are your keys. And again, mortal mind contradicting, no, those are not your keys. And I felt within, those are your keys. Try them in the lock, you will see. Well, the keys fit perfectly in the lock. Of course, these were indeed the keys. My hand had found these keys at the precise moment when I gave all thought to the Father and stopped searching with mortal mind. I found myself weeping as I thanked the Father for, for finding the seemingly small thing for me. I thought of all the times over the years when I erroneously had listened to the arguments of mortal mind that would dishonestly, if vainly, try to disagree with the fact that God is all, that God gives all, that God knows all, and that God governs all. How much delay had I allowed mortal mind to cause in my life by listening to error for even one single moment? This experience has left a deep impression within, a wonderful lesson and a sage reminder to give one's whole self to God, never to doubt his love and might and truth, to leave all to him. Mrs. Eddy writes in Science and Health, page 192, Quote, in science, you can have no, uh, no power opposed to God, and the physical senses must give up their false testimony. Your influence for good depends upon the weight you throw onto the right scale. End quote. I am very grateful for this lesson of love, to throw myself wholly into the right scale. I had held those hands in, those keys in my hand, yet mortal mind would try to argue error. Our God is indeed the remedy to any need we may think we have. All we must do is to consecrate our thought directly, continually, and lovingly to our Father, Mother, God, allowing no mortal argument to distract us, thereby continually knowing the truth. And from John eight thirty two, quote, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. End quote. Thank you. Thank you. Cara, New Mexico. Cara from New Mexico. Go ahead, please. please. Thank you. This past weekend, I drove 10 hours for a work trip, during which I made excellent use of the incredible Plainfield audio resources, for which I'm continually grateful. But in particular, I was listening uh, to and working with uh, Martha Wilcox's two addresses on body. And I, I kept thinking of how radical those ideas were in there, at least compared to what I was taught in Christian science, about not trying to either fix or ignore or get rid of body, but understanding that the spiritual body is necessary, both as a barometer of thought and, more importantly, as an expression of God. And Wilcox goes through all of the qualities of body that are essential as spiritual quality. And she drills down very specifically about each one. So I worked with them throughout the whole drive. Well, the next morning I got up for a very early walk with my dog who had been dealing with some digestive issues that had seemed very alarming to me. And I kept praying with those ideas. But I was also thinking about the upcoming roundtable, it was Sunday morning, and the watching point about not falling into the trap of using spiritual formulas. So as I was walking and working with all of that, part of a phrase came to me, this truth removes properly whatever is offensive. And that's the second half of a sentence I've always loved and often used. So I circled back to the whole phrase, which is, a spiritual idea contains not a single element of error. And this truth removes properly whatever is offensive. And I always loved the word properly, but if I'm honest, I associate it properly with like the appropriate removal of a problem. Um, but this time, because the phrase 
came to me backwards and so not formulaically. And because of what I've been listening to and, and praying with from Martha Wilcox, I got it. The only offensive thing that ever needs to be removed is in thought. And what removes that offensive thinking is the truth that a spiritual idea contains not a single element of error. So all we have to do is hold that truth, and then the offensive thinking dissipates by really understanding that the body is a complete compendium of spiritual ideas created by God. And that removes the lie, which fools us into looking to matter for meaning or evidence, good or bad. Well, the moment I got that, my thought just lifted, and I felt this huge sense of joy and release and a glorious lifting of the fear and anxiety I've been um, struggling with uh, around my dog. And since then, each time the temptation has come to worry about something material or look for the material evidence of healing, I just go right back to this beloved idea but now use it in a completely new and 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 transformative way. So I'm just so grateful for everything I'm learning here at Plainfield from the website resources <clears throat> to the watches and the roundtables and the testimony meetings where I always hear something perfect. And also for always choosing my favorite hymns, and including the two <laughs> chosen today, and uh, particularly the work I'm so fortunate to be doing with uh, my practitioner. And thank you, Craig, for the beautiful readings and all of the testimonies uh, so far this evening. Thank you. Gary. I'm so grateful for all the lessons, that the incredibly invaluable lessons that I have been learning uh, through Christian Science uh, as a member of this church. Um, I was thinking recently about a lesson that uh, came to me a few years ago uh, by uh, working with practitioner, Mrs. Evans, in this church. And it, uh, it uh, embodied in a statement in Science and Health that goes like this, where Mrs. Eddy writes, good deeds are immortal, bringing joy instead of grief, pleasure instead of pain, and life instead of death. Well, it was practitioner in this church, Mrs. Evans, who taught me what power there was in good deeds. Um, she taught me that the opposite of depression is expression. That if I'm ever feeling down or depressed or discouraged, the only sure way to get out of it is to do something for somebody else. That was when I began to put this into practice. And I, I, I tried it. Whenever I'd be feeling down, I would look for something to do for someone else and do it. And sure enough, depression would leave. It really is true that you can't be unhappy when you're helping somebody else. <laughs> She also taught me that uh, this thing about doing good deeds have to be done as God directs. It can't be a human do-goody where you're humanly trying to do something because there's usually a hidden agenda or a string attached and that does not lead to joy instead of grief it does not lead to pleasure instead of pain. And it does not lead to life instead of death. So the good always has to be at God's direction. And that was another important part of this whole lesson, is to get my own self-will out of the way and do as God directs, which is a challenge. And but I'm grateful that I at least know that it has to be done. So I'm grateful for this lesson, grateful for the help of the practitioner at the time. But I'm also grateful to Mary Baker Eddy for, for 
showing us that there is divine principle involved in a Christian life and that that Christian, that that divine principle is God, it is all powerful, and it is available for everybody in the world. And it works for everybody in the world who puts it into practice. I'm so grateful to be learning these invaluable lessons. I'm grateful to be here with you all tonight and to hear these testimonies of healings and look forward to more testimonies of healing. Thank you. <clears throat> Craig. I thank, thank God for the music that was here today <laughs> and for all inspiring testimonies. And the, the be part of this beautiful history of this church. I've seen so many healings, so many faithful members and practitioners and learn to be unselfish more than I ever have. But recently, I, I, I wanted to give thank God thanks for uh, learning not to fear the better, not to fear the weather. Yesterday, uh, there was a major thunder, very loud, trying to be frightening. And, uh, and I was trying not to be anxious. I had been learning about how Mary Baker Reddy in spiritual healings book and other writings looked in front of the clouds and uh, and had them uh, open or had them just not damage and find out that uh, in other, other places you know, the way weren't so fortunate um, <clears throat> but it was the truth that protected her situation, her environment. And uh, so as the rains came down, I originally felt anxiousness, but I remembered as it came down that God lovingly governs the weather and, and as it came down harder, that he abundantly loves us. And this was just another sign of his great, uh, great abundant love. Well, it did, it calmed me and uh, the rain continued, but there was no damage, and I felt lucky and fortunate to be abundantly loved by God. Next, I went outside today and looked at my garden. I loved it. The house was washed clear and clean, and, and, I, and I really felt like paying all my bills immediately. <laughs> I was abundantly provided for, so I did. And I thank God for helping me get through the anxiety of hearing this massive amount of rain coming down and not thinking the worst, but instead going to him and knowing his activity, what was really going on. Thank God for Mary Baker Eddy and the lessons we learn here. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for this service this evening. Uh, I'm very grateful for our round tables each Sunday that provide practical instruction that if we live it every each week, uh, step by step, results uh, in improved lives and communion with our God good. Often the word inspiration comes up in the classes and the readings and testimonies. And when I first came here, I struggled at times feeling I was keeping myself from this inspiration, but not sure how. One of the definitions in Webster's uh, for inspire is really influence or move or guide by the by divine, which is God. So God influencing us and guiding us. In Spiritual Footsteps by Carpenter, he writes that Mrs. Eddy continually worked with students, quote, to stop that which was not inspiration in order that inspiration might flow freely, end quote. And that's from chapter 29 and it's titled Mrs. Eddy's Demand for Inspiration and it can be found on our website. I found uh, that there were a lot of things in my life that were keeping this from flowing and uh, one of them I think number one was a really negative sense of expectancy of maybe bad things would happen for example a package on my porch worrying about someone taking it and uh, then also people pleasing and being driven by pressure and rushing and definitely overthinking about things 
They were not coming from inspiration or listening to the still small voice of God. And I have been working on this in Christian science and getting myself out of the way so that God's guidance uh, can take over my life. But it was with the prayers and instruction of my playing field practitioner over weeks and, and consistently calling her and working with her that was helping me break these negative habits of thought. So yesterday I was very grateful when I got a clear inspiration to go home right at 6.15. It was a very specific time and I stood by the idea even though I was tempted by some other thoughts or ideas or, and even someone asking if I could maybe stay till 6.30. But it felt very strong as I followed this guidance and trusted it. And I got home one minute before this uh, severe storm that Craig was talking about hit. And I had been very grateful I didn't have to drive in it. And I'm learning to be grateful for these small moments and looking for them and listening to be guided and thanking God. I'm so grateful because this is such a gift that we can have this connection with God. And it's, it's a greater these little things uh, point to greater works that can be done with this listening. And I know that there, uh, there were a lot of people praying for that storm. It was an electrical storm, and it was very aggressive, and it was met, and it was, became quiet, and just became normal, steady, needed rain, like Greg said, and I was very grateful for that. And we are told in the Bible to ask God for wisdom, and Christian science helps us understand the science behind this promise. I'm so grateful for our Bible and for Science and Health by Mary Baker Eddy and this church which correctly lives and teaches from them. Benjamin. Yeah, um, I'm grateful to, to be here tonight. I also want to thank Craig for the um, inspiring reading. Um, a few days ago, um, I took my kids to the park, um, not far away from our house. Um, and um, it was almost time for us to leave. So as we were approaching to the vehicle, and there was another kid as well who was um, driving her bicycle and she was coming down the slope and um, obviously she was still learning how to drive uh, how to ride a bicycle and she lost control of her bicycle and the bicycle was just flying down the slope and um, my car was there and she landed in front of my vehicle. And uh, that time I was trying to put my keys in the car, then I, uh, I grabbed them and I went over there and I picked her up to make sure that she's okay. Her, uh, her bicycle was, you know, disfigured already. And she was obviously scared and crying. Then I told her, I asked her where her parents are, and um, she she was very apologetic to me. Then finally, I followed her to look at her her mom, who was obviously upset, and she was upset that it ha what happened to her. But I tried to calm her down, tried to speak the truth to her, and. Um, try to let her know because she didn't see what happened. I saw what happened and the people around there saw what happened. Obviously, she wasn't watching her children. She was completely out of sight, which is not the right thing to do at the park. And the child was not wearing a helmet. And I tried to let her know that if it wasn't my vehicle that was parked here, the way the, vehicle, uh, the, way the bicycle was flying, it would with time every year ago, the bicycle would continue flying, and then, and with the child not wearing a, a helmet, it could have been even more catastrophic. And she should be thanking God, because she only had a little uh, scratch on her 
her foot. I tried to talk to her that God really did a wonderful, loving thing to the child. And that's what she should focus on and stop being upset about the child falling or the damages that occurred. A lot of those things could be will be taken care of. But the most important thing is that God saved her life. She didn't hit her head on the pavement because she wasn't wearing a helmet. And she, after listening to me, she started to understand that, yeah, that's actually true. And she started to become a little bit more grateful. And then I had spoke to her a couple of times after that to make sure that she's okay. And then she's still very grateful what happened. Uh, even though it will, it will possibly cause her um, uh, uh, something about you know taking care of uh, the damage that occurred afterwards, but she was very very grateful that God really saved her her child's life by putting my vehicle there. Really, that prevented prevented her from you know hitting her head or just flying away with the bicycle. Me as well, I was very grateful to God that the child was okay, that God took care of her because God loved her, all her children, no matter where they are. I'm so grateful because I would have been upset like her if I didn't have the truth that I have, which I learned in this church. I'm grateful that God has given us what we have here, that we can apply it in every circumstance in every situation, in, um, no matter where we are. Truth, God is always there taking care of his children. I'm grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Florence, Georgia. Florence from Georgia. Go ahead, please. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for everything tonight, for the testimonies and the music and the hymns. I'm so grateful to God and to Mrs. Eddy for giving us a scientific statement of being, which can be found on 468 of Science and Health. And I'm just going to read it because many are listening. And for those who haven't heard it before, she says, what is the scientific statement of being? And the answer is, there is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. I emphasize the image and likeness because I see that in some testimonies here and also from abroad, all understand is this man as God's image and likeness. And that seems when it's gratefully accepted and lived, you know, daily knowing that this is what I am, this is what makes me one with God and to appreciate the power in the truth of our oneness with God, that alone seems to bring people much comfort, much peace, and much healing. And I just wanted to uh, you know, remind us all not to forget it, because I think it's, because one, it's one of the things that we say often in our Sunday school, uh, in our Sunday, on every Sunday said, we may take it for granted, just like the Lord's Prayer or anything like that. So to just remember that this scientific statement of being, she's given us what it is that we are to learn, to help us learn anew what we really are. Tonight, Craig talked about our new birth. From this, we learn what it is that we are. When we know what we are, then we are not subject to the carnal thoughts, the wrong thoughts that come. And from you know, obeying that with gratitude, our hearts just being so happy for knowing who we are, we can glorify God 
you know, it says, glorify God in our body and in our spirit, which all belong to God. That's all I wanted to say. I'm so grateful to be here tonight and thank God for everything that he's doing in this church, in our lives, and have the ability for, because of what we are learning, to look at this world, the what's going on, all the things going on in a different light. I'm grateful to be here tonight.